welcome back everyone this video is basically in continuation of our previous video on network layer routing so we were discussing how the data travels from source to those destination by using ip routing so in first of our scenario we discussed that if the source and the destination are on the same local area network then they don't need any routing they can exchange information with each other by using local media so this was the first scenario and in the next scenario we discussed that there are two networks but both of the networks are connected with a default gateway or the default router so if one user on one network wants to send some data to other user and if that user is available on a network which is directly connected to one of the interfaces of the default gateway or the default router then we saw that with the help of this routing table we can forward the packet to to that network by using the appropriate encapsulation to be used on this medium but today we are going to discuss another scenario in which of course the destination is not on the local area network but and in addition to that the destination network is not directly connected with the with the router or the default router or the default gateway so the destination is connected with with the help of some other router and the connection in between those routers is serial and the second eo mpl so this is ethernet over multi protocol level switching so we discussed these two wide area network technologies in our previous videos so anyway the destination is not directly connected with any of the interfaces of the router then what happens so we saw that this user for instance this user generated a packet and that packet has has been encapsulated by using ethernet uh, standard and this router actually receives that packet or receives that frame and it checks for the error and if there are no errors the router is going to process that frame and then this decapsulates the frame and gets this packet and now in this packet uh, in this packet actually we have the uh, ip header and in this ip header we have the ip address of our destination node so this is the destination and this ip address is available in this ip header by looking at the ip address in this header part of the packet and and after getting the ip address the router will look into the routing table that is the database as we discussed in this routing table it will see that where is is my destination is available in the routing table so this is the destination subnet so router has to send this packet to this and if the router wants to send the packet to this subnet then router has to use this serial interface to forward that packet to the next hop or the next ip address which is this it means this so this router has to send this packet to this router r router r1 for that the router has to look at the medium which is which is being used to connect this router with this router and this medium is basically a serial connection and for the serial connection we use hdlc data link layer protocol it means hdlc header so this is the, this is the destination network so hdlc header and trailer will be used uh, as an encapsulation and after this encapsulation this router will send the frame to the next router now the frame has been received by the next router but the destination is, is still not connected with this router r1 so router this router r1 will receive this frame and after receiving that frame this r1 will check for the errors in the frame by using fcs feed fcs feed and if there are no errors then router r1 will process that frame it means the router will decapsulate the frame it means it will remove the hdlc header and hdlc trailer from the frame and it will get the ip packet 
and in that IP packet again there will be header and in this header in this header part again the same destination address which is this will be there and after reading the destination IP address this router will get help from the routing table and this is the routing table and it will look that to read an IP address which is within this subnet this router has to use it's this this interface that is fast Ethernet interface and by using this interface this router has to forward or has to send this IP packet to the next router or the next router interface having this IP address and you can see this is the IP address but to forward that packet this router has to utilize this physical medium and this this support so this is the connection between this router R1 and R2 so this is Ethernet and now to utilize this physical medium this router has to encapsulate this IP packet into Ethernet frame uh, R1 is not directly connected with the router of course so the R1 will add uh, header and trailer on top of that and it will send that through the interface so this is the Ethernet header and trailer are being added to the packet and now this is the frame that frame now that frame will travel from router R1 to router R2 and once R2 has received that frame that R2 now will again check the frame which has been received for some errors by using FCS field and if there are some errors it will discard the frame if there are no errors then it will process so let us suppose that there are no errors and this router r2 is going to process that frame process means this router will decapsulate it means this will remove the ethernet header and trailer from the receive frame and now it will have the ip packet and this ip packet again will have a header ip header and this header will have the IP address again the destination IP address because this is the ultimate destination where this packet has to be sent after looking at this IP address the router will get help from its routing table and in this routing table you can see this routing table indicates that this subnet so this is maybe this subnet so this subnet 0 this will be 0 so this subnet is directly connected and if this is directly connected then R2 doesn't need to send this packet to any other router because this node is directly connected and then if this node is connected with this router by using for example Ethernet technology or Ethernet network then this router has again to encapsulate this packet by using Ethernet header and trailer so if the destination network is is directly connected a router forwards the packet out the interface so for instance this is the interface the router has to use this is gigabit ethernet and to destination mac of pc2 so this is for instance pc2 or the destination if this is the ethernet link between this router and this user then the the packet will again be encapsulated using ethernet header and ethernet trailer and now in this ethernet header actually there will be the mac address of this user or the layer 2 address of this user and this layer 2 address is known by using arp protocol the are the address resolution protocol with the help of address resolution protocol this router learns the mac address of this user and then router r2 basically sends that frame to the ultimate destination so this is how you can see that ip packet is generated by this user by user this user and during creation of the ip packet it adds the header in that header we have the destination ip address so destination ip address remains same throughout this traveling even though the MAC address or the layer 2 address changes with respect to these intermediate devices but the IP address which is the ultimate destination address remains same throughout the traveling so in this way uh, internet protocol has helped us to 
to deliver our message to the ultimate destination. So this was this was some uh, some introductory video on on IP routing, how the how the packets travel through through the network, and I hope this was a bit helpful for you. And uh, thank you, thank you very much for your time.